Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another episode of Testing in Nutshell. This is Neeraj Kumar Singh and we are talking about UFT tutorials. As a part of today's tutorial, we are getting into another segment of UFT which is going to add more value to your scripts and called as Accurate Measurement of the Execution Time and named as Transactions. You can definitely make use of certain statements called as transactions as a part of your script in order to return the accurate time being taken in order to execute certain combination or lines of code, which is your test script. Now, certainly it becomes very important for some of the things additionally, not just measuring the accurate time. Sometimes when you have a failure with a more complex script, then the transactions helps you to understand that which particular part of your script actually failed. So transaction will basically be putting a set of instructions or certain batch test together to give you a return saying that, okay, this is what the exact and accurate time taken for executing these lines of script. At the same time, if a failure happens within a particular transaction, you can be very much easier finding it quite simpler and easier to debug your script by just calling out which transaction failed so you know which part of the script you need to work upon. So that's where we'll be looking forward to understand how to make use of transaction today and apply that as a part of your script. Let's start and understand the same today. As a part of this tutorial, we are trying to understand how to make use of transactions as a part of UFT scripts. And we talk about the automation scripts being precise as one of the advantages of automation. And that's where we want to take, take down the number of seconds, number of minutes and amount of time taken in order to execute certain set of instruction. And that's where we'll be talking about today that how we can be more precise in terms of measuring certain execution and deriving that particular time which is taken by set of inputs and instructions to be executed. Now with that keeping in mind we're just trying to have some certain set of instructions right here and simply run that without any set of transaction and see what is that we get in terms of the duration for the execution. So in order to do that I just click on run and see the behavior of execution later during the result window we'll try to look into the same and try to analyze what was the time taken for doing the same job. So right now if you see my execution is complete and I will be taken to the design uh, result window and here I say that it's been taking around 9 seconds to execute this entire set of instruction. But that's not a precise time because if I see everything independently I can see there are specific timeline in order to find out more about this but what if this was exactly what it is right it's just a nine seconds which is a round off but to measure that whether it is the accurate time whether it is the precise time I need to use something called as transactions transactions not only help you to utilize the exact measurement of time during the automation execution but also can help you to measure different parts of the script in separate measurable transactions which also helps you to debug the particular script in the right order. So let's use a transaction in a simple manner first and then we'll see that how it can help you to minimize your effort in debugging. So number one, how to include your transactions. So first way is to do by going to design menu and here you have a button called a start transaction and end transaction. By keeping your cursor at the right point, you can click on design and say start transaction. It will just ask you for a name for the transaction. For example, this is my uh, flight application. So I just give it as flight and say, where do you want to insert this? Before the current step or after the current step? Right now, I've made a space for it. If you put your cursor anywhere in between, you can utilize these two options as well. So I say, OK. So now you would see that there is a statement written that is services.starttransaction flight. Now, in order to close that, you can also write it manually if you want, or you can use the design menu saying that end transaction. And it will just prompt you the same thing that which transaction do you want to close. So let's use this manually here. Services dot end transaction is the method, but it has to be the same name which you started. Otherwise, it will not close the transaction because it has to detect which transaction you want to close as we can have nested transactions within this. Now by having this transaction being entered and looped uh, our script together, 
Let's run this once again and see that what response do we get. So running this script once again with added transaction statements and trying to look into the execution and again at the end result will show us what exactly is the precise time taken for the same job. Now if I come here and I look at the result this time it says 12 seconds for some reason but you do have a transaction statement here now which says this is where the transaction flight started and at the end you will get a confirmation message that the flight ended with pass status and the duration was 9.6872. Now what is this difference here? Can you see that? This is 12, this is 9. So this is where we talk about being accurate with our timings and says that the entire set of execution took just 9.6872 seconds. Now why does this rise up to 12? First of all, if you look at your script again, we have added two extra lines to execute and this total time, 12 seconds, includes the time taken to execute these two lines as well. Whereas the 9.6872 is exclusively for what is written inside the transaction. All right. And now that could definitely be up and down. So it just rounds it off and shows us as uh, the execution. For example, if I go back to my result, if you see it says something like 9.682. So it was rounding it off and telling us that you took 9 seconds accurately to run this test. So not every time it is required in order to do the same job. So let's see and understand how we can use it as a nested option to add more value for debugging. For example, this is my launch part of it. So I can have an initiate, initial uh, transaction just for launching, but just keeping it simple. So services dot start transaction and the transaction name is uh, the say for example login and once I complete the login part I close this transaction so let's try and see the end transaction here and if you see there's a drop down and it says me which one you want to close so it does not realize when I open this particular transaction it has not picked it up because I didn't start it from here let's try making it caps if does it make a difference so if I go to end transaction no so K UB VB script is not case sensitive please remember that so I have to go ahead and services dot end transaction and the transaction name is login once again so this is a separate transaction only to measure the time taken for logging into the system now if I want I can just continue ahead and do the same job here services dot start transaction followed by uh, book of light or let's keep it simple fly and closing that transaction here that is services dot end transaction and closing the tag fly and then of course the closure of the parent transaction right the flight so now if you see this is how I can make use of a nested uh, transaction statements which will add more value to my debugging part so let's run this with this added transaction and see the difference in our output Okay, with that execution completed, let's start with the flight which started and then login started again. Now time taken to do the login part is 3.6400. So these are for the three lines here, agent name, password and OK button. When it comes to the fly, again the flight transaction started and flight transaction ended here. So to book the flight, it took around 5.5816 seconds and the overall time is 9.6949 seconds. Now remember team, when it comes to transaction flight total duration, it includes the time taken for these transaction statements, which are fly and login. Okay, both the statements, uh, start transaction and transaction, because it's a part of the parent transaction, which is flight. Only their respective times, for example, transaction fly will have 5.58, and the time taken to execute this line will be excluded. But if it is, how it is covered by a parent transaction, then it will definitely be including the time for the child wants. So keeping that in mind, we understand how to make use of transaction. If there are any failures, of course, you'll be prompted with a fail here in the result. And it will also show you which transaction failed. 
So you will be sure about like which part of the script I should work upon and be free to debug them appropriately. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.